So uh, welcome, welcome everyone to Reclaim Your Calm. I love this class that I do on calmness because I think that we all get where we forget to be positive, to smile because something is going backwards from where we want it to be. Something's yep. happening in our life that we just don't know how we're going to handle it or what we're going to do about it. And, you know, it's okay to feel that way every once in a while for a short time, but only for a short time. Because guess what? There are answers. They may not come when we want. They may not come in the form that we want. And they may not even be the answers that we want. But... They will be the answers that we need if we listen. And I have a question for you, Tamara and Dar. Do you have your fall calm ready? Because we are in fall now. Do you have the season of fall calm ready? Now, the reason that I do this class, fall calm, is because the fall seems to start being a busy time of year for us. For business people that own their own business are maybe you're in a corporate business um, that you are in, you know, selling something, you're having to meet quotas, you're having to meet deadlines. We are at the end of the year. I know it's hard to think, right? Star that we are yep. at the end of the year. It is already <clears throat> fall. Before we're long, it's going to become winter. And then we go into a whole nother trans transition of, oh, it's really here. But now we're in fall. My daughter called me this morning to give me all the activities going on for the kindergartner. You know, all the fall parties and Halloween and, <clears throat> excuse me, trunk a tree and meet the teacher and it's all here and then we get into thanksgiving and then we get into all the holidays of december depending on how you believe i'm a christmas freak i'm gonna tell you we love christmas we absolutely love it but guess what it is also chaos if you let it become chaos because you become busy and everything's rattling in, in your mind how am I going to get my business done? How am I going to get my house ready? How, what am I going to feed everyone? Where am I going to go? Who's coming? Who's going? Where's everyone staying or sleeping? Um, are we doing gifts? Are we exchanging gifts? Are we going to forget about gifts? Remember, it's all about you, you being happy, Dar. You being <laughs> happy, Tamara. Putting those smiles on others' faces. And it doesn't mean gifts. It doesn't mean a, a big traditional woohoo. It's all about what makes you and your family and friends happy. So I want to talk about a little bit. I want to ask you both questions, if you don't mind. This is going to be very, very interesting. <laughs> questions. I want to, number one, I want to ask Tamara, Tamara, what is the number one thing between now, the beginning of fall, until the end of the year, 2024, that is really twisting your brain around and you're going, oh my gosh, how am I going to finish this? How am I going to handle this? It can be a personal level or it can be a business level it can be a holiday level whatever it may be it's your time so you tell me what is it that you really bothered with that we might be able to shed light on I don't think anybody can shed light on it right now but the hardest part I have right now is that I'm getting ready to come into all this new seasoning without anybody Aww. My kids are here. They're here, you know, they're around, but they don't live here and they barely ever come around. Usually we'll have a little thing together, but that's it. 
And as far as the rest of my family goes, we're not going to be trying to get together. You know, we don't, my sister, my youngest sister and I don't get along at all. So all of that, you know, with all of that going on, I say that it's going to be, I have to do this alone this year. And it's going to be hard for me, but it'll be all right. It will be all right, and you're not alone, Tamara. And I think we can help you with this. And I've got a lot of great ideas because I remember party. I remember uh, back even when I was young, um, when Mark and I, the Army, decided to send us to Germany. Yeah. We were 19. We had no one but us. And I, we, and then they called him away to go out and do whatever they do. So I was really alone. Aww. I want to tell you, I really wasn't alone because there's always someone there to catch you, Tamara. I'm there to I, catch you. Yeah. I'm there to catch you. But I, I want to give you some ideas. That number one, you said your youngest sister and you don't get along. Okay. Maybe between now and the holidays, the end of the year, I'm, I'm not going to say holidays, between now and, and the end of the year, I would invite you to just uh, pick up a card and mail it to her or pick up the phone and call her or pick up the phone and just text her. You don't have to say anything except, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Yeah. Something simple. Okay. Um, I know you have another sister there near you, right? Your mom lives with, I think. Okay. And you and I know that you have a son that lives really close to you, right? Yeah. I have a son that lives like um probably an hour away and then a son that lives like two hours away. Okay. So yeah. I would invite you one thing that I do with my girls, and, and maybe you can't do it very often, but let's say from now until the end of the year, go ahead and call your sons and say. Hey, is there any way we can get together? If you can't do, if I don't know what you celebrate, but this is how I would do it. I want to have dinner at my house on Thanksgiving at this time. Will this work for you? Or I want to have Christmas dinner at this time. Will that work for you? And if neither one works, say, hey, can we have Thanksgiving the weekend after or the weekend before? Or Christmas after or Christmas the weekend before, after or before? Even if you had to have them at different times, Tamara, have it. You know, sometimes my daughters and I, we just have dinner just because we want to see each other. Aww. No special occasion. Hey, I'm coming to your house on Friday. I know you're off work. Let's have dinner. Or let's watch the football game together. I know you're a football fan, aren't you? I think I've heard that. Maybe invite your sons over for football day. Uh, they like Chiefs. I like Dallas. They like... <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work too well, would it? <laughs> <laughs> Five things. Just, and even if one of them says yes and one of them says no, okay, well, you have one of them. Right? So Which keep one? In mind. Same thing for your mom. Your mom lives right there. I know she, you know, I know us moms drive our kids crazy. And, and you know what? I'm sure she probably says, oh, that Tamara just drives me crazy for thinking like that. And I'm sure my daughters say, oh, I can't believe my mom said that. It's okay. Invite mom over for coffee once a week or invite her to dinner with you on Sunday. Cook dinner for her or call your sister up that she lives with and say, hey, let's have potluck at your house or why don't we have potluck at my house? It doesn't have to be for a special reason. It's just because every day is special. Remember that because I know us three here and if any of your listeners are do not share the same God as Tamara and myself and Dar does, that's okay. You share some kind of other blessings that come from different directions and that's okay, however you believe. 
but no, you are special and you are special every day and you bring greatness every day. Sometimes we have to create it. It doesn't just fall in our lap. Sure. So I'm asking you, Tamara, to create the togetherness for you and your family. And if it doesn't work for family, I want you to start reaching out to your church members. I and do that. Invite one at a time. Hey, come and have coffee at my house on Monday morning. You don't have to talk about business. Literally have a girl's coffee time. If I had a community where I could say, let's have coffee time. Oh my goodness. But I haven't been to church. Oh, inside of a church since before COVID. And I, I watch it on TV and I listen to it, but I haven't been inside of a church since COVID. And I've got to get my R's back in there. Because even though I'm feeling it, you don't feel it until you're in that community with handshakes and hugs and tears and laughter, right? And Absolutely. So I want you to start reaching out to, I want you to set a time. You know what? My house is clean. I'm going to invite so-and-so over. And if those people don't come, if they say no, they're busy, I want you to go to the next one on your list. Start with your family first, because it sounds like you need some family time. And then go to your friends. Or you know what, Tamara, if you'd rather spend time with your friends than your family, start with your friends. Because there's some of my family members, mm, now nah, I don't want to have coffee with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I know there's going to be an argument, there's going to be some negativity, and I don't have any of that in my bones to do. Life I don't have cool. energy for negativity either. No, I, no I'm building... I'm building a legacy of happiness and smiles. Can't you tell? Amen. So did that help any at all, Tamara? Did you take some notes? Because you know I'm going to bug you now. Yes, I did. You know, I really knew. I, I already knew how to do it. I just sometimes, like my, I don't know so much about my family. But my, my kids, on the other hand, yes, I will definitely do that. Yes, yes, please. And and reach out to those friends, make new friends. You find friends everywhere. Um, and if you know, and if you don't want to invite them to your house, go to a coffee shop or you know, wherever and however. Um, you know, I my grandson stays with me, my 16-year-old grandson stays with me two nights a week now. Aww. I'm loving it. I take him to school. I pick him up from school. I iron his clothes. I cook his lunches and pack him. I mean, I do all the mommy stuff, you know. I miss that. I'm, I'm a nurturer. I love that part of it. And I took one of his friends home the other day because I had to pick him up from a friend's. And I had to take him home. And he goes, and I never met this friend. And he said, I don't want you to think that I live in one of these big, nice houses. You got to turn down this little gravel road and he lives in an RV park and it's a really, you know, anyway, not the best. And I'm like, I said, hey, buddy, are you, are you, are you not happy with where you live? Are you downgrading where you live? Are you not proud where you live? He goes, well, I'm not saying that. I do have a storm shelter, a tornado shelter if a tornado comes. I said, hey, that's a positive thing. I said, never, ever, ever be ashamed of where you live because or what you drive or where your parents work or the parent you don't have or the life you don't have or the shoes you don't have. Be fortunate that you have a roof over your head. You have someone that loves you enough to let them live with you. You live somewhere. And you wear shoes and you wear clothes. And I want you to remember one other thing. Just because you're there today doesn't mean you have to live there when you are a grown adult. You can make the changes. And I had to say that to myself. And you girls have heard my story. And part of my story when I'm doing a trauma talk, when I do those kind of talks, is 
Just because you start off in poverty and abuse doesn't mean you have to die in poverty and abuse. You All can right. change that. You can change that. And what is poverty? What really is poverty? I have food in my mouth and a roof over my head, so I'm A-OK. -okay. That's just really the way I believe. But people that's always had don't understand that sometimes. You know, um, I hope that did help, Tamara. And I want you to please, please, please start reaching out to people. Mm -hmm. Volunteer to your sister's house or your mom's house. Hey, I'm bringing a pot of beans next Wednesday. Be ready for some lunch. I'm coming to your house. And just show up with a pot of beans and some corn. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I will have to do that. I will. Hey, you can make some pretty good beans uh, that from home uh, out of from scratch. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't make corn bread, bread, maple, yummy. Maple. And it's perfect for the fall season, right? Yeah. Dar, what can we help you with? that's bothering you in this season between now and the end of the year that we could help you on. I know that you have some health issues. None of us are health, you know, we're not doctors or anything like that, but I'm sure there's some other things that are going on with you that maybe you and Abby might be looking at, you know, how are we going to do this or what are we going to do about that or. Um, well, uh, as far as Christmas goes, um, Abby and I are about halfway between both yourself, LaDonna, and Tamara, uh, meaning that the last couple of years we haven't even put up a Christmas tree. Um, it just hasn't, it, it's just been so very surreal, and even more so now since the last two months. Um, and I say that because right now, is my favorite season fall and the colors are almost at peak it's so close to being at peak and i can't see it and it's driving me nuts i know it's beautiful i've seen it how many years i've seen it 60 years and that it, it really bites yes but you know what? I want you to be blessed that you have the memories from the that last year and the year before and the last 60-ish years. And, and yes. really, really just close your eyes and just remember. And then you'll figure out you can smell it. You can feel it. Mm -hmm. Have Abby help you walk out to trees if you can get that far. If not... Ask her to bring you in some of those leaves so that you can feel them and touch them and touch yes. them. And, and just that brings back some of the real life in it the does. It, it truly it does. does. I've been after her to clean up the fire fire pit area um, so that we can sit out and enjoy some fall fires and hot yes. chocolate. And, yes. um, but yeah, that's, that's one thing. Um, and it, it also drives me crazy that my brothers don't call. I have three brothers, um, one who lives in Edmonton and is old enough to know better. The other is in Aurelia, and he's kind of halfway in between Dave, well, Dave and my older brother, Don, Dan. See, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so it, it's like I, if I want anything to do with Don, um, I have to be the one to call him. And from time to time, I bug my brother-in-law and my brother, oldest brother, Dan, that, uh, okay, it's your turn to cook Christmas dinner this year. <laughs> and, and we always pick up, we always happily pick up my mom and take her along with us. Absolutely. So, yeah, family, family closeness is not, um, is not uh, upon us at all. Um, even my my mom's side of the family, the three sisters don't make calls. Nobody calls each other. Well, you know what, Dar? I'm really glad you brought this up because 
I can't, my parents, number one, I don't like my parents. You girls know that. But I do have a lot of memories from my parents. I mean, that was my childhood. That's who I am. That's where I came from. Yeah. My, both of my parents came from, they worked in the cotton fields. Guess what their moms did? They had lots of babies so they could grow up and work in the cotton fields. Because that's oh, geez. the only way they got to eat. So there's 13 on my dad's family, kids, and 12 on my mom's. Wow. Okay. Can you imagine their Christmas dinner table? Ooh. And they all came. No they way. They all brought something and they all came back then. That's why I'm telling you this story. But families have became so separated in life. But there's a lot of reasons why, I believe. This is my belief. Number one, back then we weren't as educated. And the only time that the family ever separated back then is if they went to the military. Mm -hmm. They didn't move off because they graduated college and got a better job in Texas. So they moved off of, from Arkansas. My mother hated me. I have a sister that dislikes me. And one of the reasons is because I moved away. Well, I moved away because when my husband, before he even graduated from his college in his career, once he left the military, Texas Instruments hired him. We couldn't say no. Because where we lived at the time, there were no jobs that were going to pay him as much as Texas Instruments. And thank God we got that. And I say us because, you know, we did everything together. We met at 15, married at 18. We did it all together. He's been there 35 plus years. Wow. That has been our life. It has become our life. Now, did we go back and visit? Yes, but this is only a one-way street. I will call my sister every once in a while on a blue moon because I get frustrated. I'm going to be honest. And I'll say, why am I going to call her? She hasn't called me in a year. Why am I going to call her? Because I always thought it was my job being the oldest of four. I'm the oldest of four living children. And I always thought it was my job. I'm going to tell you, there's four of us, me and my youngest brother. We talk at least every two to three weeks. Either he'll call me or I'll call him. I'll go visit him. He'll come and visit me. If his wife comes to Dallas on work, she'll visit me, you know, without him. Um, he goes to Arkansas and he'll see my, our other brother and every five years, maybe our sister. Now I can call my other brother Anytime, and he'll talk to me, and, and my sister will talk to me if I call, but only if I call them. And you know what was so scary? Is this last year, I got a call from my youngest brother that my oldest brother was in the, um, the older brother, I'm the oldest, but the one right under me, was in the emergency room and they thought he was having a heart attack. That was scary. Mm -hmm. Because it's been a couple, you know, it's been a year or more since I've seen him. I went, we all went to Florida for my niece's wedding. He was there and I got to see him. Aww. We have to take the time, even if they're not big enough to take the time. Girls, I'm going to, I'm putting the hammer down. Us three are going to take the time to say, hey, let's meet halfway between. Find the farthest brother from you, Dar, because I know you're the only girl. And say, you know what? Let's all meet at this restaurant on this day, halfway between all of you siblings. Or if the middle sibling is in the middle of you guys, hey, Dan, we're having dinner at your house on Thanksgiving, right? It's a halfway mark. And Tamara, I know your mom and sister lives close together with you. If that's the only one you can have Thanksgiving with, have it. Or maybe the church is going to have a Thanksgiving dinner, you know, or maybe for Christmas or Christmas Eve, you know, um, I've been lucky. I've been very thankful that I haven't had to change my holidays yet. I'm afraid it may be happening as my family grows. 
you know, because my my oldest grandson's been dating a girl now for, oh, I'm thinking there may be a year and a half or two years. Her family has Christmas on Christmas Eve and so do we. So she never gets to come to ours and he never gets to go to theirs. But one day that may have to change. Mm -hmm. But I know growing up that some people would have like Thanksgiving, the Sunday after Thanksgiving or the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Or they would have Christmas the week before. I know the lady at my bank that I banked with for a long time. They have their um, Christmas dinner the first weekend of December. Because the other parts of the families has there. So try to find a medium ground to mm -hmm. keep the calm for you and the rest of the family. And don't think that you're taking the back seat. My husband sometimes will say, why should we take the back seat? Why can't they take the back seat? No, it's not a back seat. It's a calm area. I stay calm and I'm blessed to have the time. And you know what? Him and I can go to a movie. I don't know. We'll figure it out. So just remember that. Put yourself that, you know what? I'm going to be the bigger person and I'm going to be the calm one. And I'm going to make it happen for the family or my friends or for me or you know, and I would, you will feel better, girls, if you put up a Christmas tree, even if it's a little bitty one. Oh, and we have this beautiful Christmas tree. Put it's it up. It's on it. We don't even have to decorate it. It's beautiful. Star, put it up. You and Abby, dance, put it in the middle of your living room floor and dance around it every night. Yeah. <laughs> There's no it. room. Smell <laughs> it. But Put it up. It'll make the vibe better. It truly will. Mm -hmm. It will make it better. My husband says, why do you make me put the lights up every year? We live in the country. Remember that. There's only one house by us. <laughs> it we doesn't don't. matter. I want the lights up. And the family comes and they see it for an hour and then they go out. And he's worked all, me and him works for a whole month putting lights up. But you know what? It makes me feel good. Yeah. It Aww. brings back all the childhood memories of putting the tree up. And we still do a live tree. Yeah. You know, so remember, find your calm for you and the loved ones around you. And it doesn't always have to be family. You know, invite that best friend over. You know what, Dark? I remember when Spencer was lost, all kind of people were reaching out to you and they were trying to help you find Spencer. Maybe it's time for you to have a Spencer party saying goodbye to Spencer for all those people that helped you find Spencer. I know that one of your neighbors is the one that found him. Have you and Abby, you know, maybe had him over for dinner? Or had him, have him over for the kids? Have him over at the pit party when you have the pit going? Actually, um, the person that found Spencer was the person that gave him to us. See? So he's very special. And yes, he is because he was the very first boy that I ever kissed. Oh! <laughs> and, and so when he came, I let him know that Spencer disappeared. He came the very next day looking all over the place and he found him at the neighbor's culvert that goes under their driveway. So you need to have those neighbors over for coffee. Yeah. Or you know what? Take them a cup of coffee and sit out on the porch with them. Right. How good would that make you feel, Dar? Probably pretty good. And we have Frank over often. Good. Um he also has he also has a son whose name is Frank E. Um, and he's growing up to be quite a handsome young fellow. In fact, he looks so much like his dad did. That's awesome. See, you have so many <laughs> We're still in touch. Friends. Have them over for dinner. Invite them for Thanksgiving. Invite them for Christmas. Right. Invite them just a Sunday dinner. Invite them for a Tuesday lunch. It doesn't matter. On a Thursday morning. Um, Are you doing more coffee, Abby? 
Speaking of coffee, Dar says, you can go ahead and fill mine up, babe. I, up. I know, right? I'd like to top up. <laughs> so, girls, I just want you to remember to find your calm. Now, we've talked about a lot of calm in our personal lives. How about our business lives, Tamara? What's going on in your business that we can uh, um, help you calm? All right. Well, just so y'all know, I'm kind of, I've stepped back into it. That's all I can tell you. Oh. Um, I've been really, the last month has been really hell on me. And I really got depressed. And I really got to the point where I was doing a lot of crying and da da da. And now I'm over all that. And now it's time to move on. And, um, I am actually getting back into it. I, as you can tell, two days in a row, I've done videos um, and I have to stay consistent. So consistency is my key. Yes, it's everyone's key, Tamara. It's everyone's key. That's the thing is we have That's to true. make it. Without consistency, we can't thrive in personal and business. It's just the way it is. So... Find that calmness and find what you know you can do easily first. Don't start out hard. Even though you're restarting and you know how to do it, it's still hard if you haven't done it in a month, if you haven't done it in a week. I'll tell you, when I took my cruise and came back, it was hard to get started again. But I just started doing, you know, contacting three people a day the first day then five the next day then six the next day whatever your numbers are don't come back and say i'm going to reach out to 15 people every day that may be a little hard don't make it hard on yourself keep it calm and keep it consistent even if it's only three for the first three days and you need up it for six for the next six days whatever it is no number is too small as long as it's a number. And remember, zero is not a number. Zero is zero. Even if it's only one a day. And um, Dar, what I would have to say, I know you're not able to make your cards right yet or, you know, who knows what's going to happen to that. And I don't even want you to go into your cave. What I want you to thrive to do is make your household your business. Make yourself an organizer for you and Abby. I'm going to have Abby put this box in front of me and I can fill it if it's laundry or if it's dishes or whatever it may be. And I'm going to start putting things away or donating it or selling it, whatever you, you're going to do with it. Um, and go put it in the car as soon as that box is full because if you don't, You'll start taking stuff out of that full box you're going to donate or sell. You're going to donate it, fill up the box, and go put it in the car. You know, um, I, I still had that system, and I was in the business for 20 years of selling right. items. And as soon as I get a box full that I'm donating, it goes to the car. Well, mine doesn't go to the car. It goes into a certain stack in the garage. And then when my husband's off work, he takes those boxes and he takes them to the veterans or he takes them to the SBCA. If it's towels, linens, blankets, any of that, it goes to SBCA for the dog shelters. If it's something that, you know, wearable, then it all goes to the vet. That's the way I choose to do it. You may choose something completely different and that's okay. Um, but remember the calmness. Be calm. And it's a lot easier being calm when you have a clean house, you have a clean desk, you have a clean mind. And when I say clean mind, I mean like clear it out. Get rid of the cobwebs, the doubts, and the mischievous behaviors that you may have up there dancing in your head. They're not doing you any good. It's, you remember, your mind is something that is not free. Your mind is not free. Keep it cleared out and keep the people in it that serve you best. Okay. So I hope 
that you've learned something, remembered something, that you had an, oh, wow, why haven't I done that lately? What is the number one thing that you came away with today for you, Dar? Oh, the number one thing, getting caught up with you ladies and getting to be here again after how long disappearance? And guess what? I'll be here on, what is, what is the next event? Tomorrow we have the workspace. I think it's going to be a I'll coffee be here. time tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's my takeaway is happy to be here. Yes, thank you. And tomorrow with coffee time, I'm asking everyone to bring their goals that they haven't finished for the year, personal or business, your favorite fall mug filled with your favorite drink for in the morning for our workspace. Tamara, what's the number one thing you're taking away with you today? Wait, let's see. Um, reach out. Reach out and touch somebody. And I really oh have not. Reach out and touch somebody. Yes. Yes. I really haven't done Touching that. Touching you. Can you feel it? Yes, I do. I always feel you it. You too. Dar, I absolutely love you. You're just amazing to me. Oh, thank you. I live by, one of my ways to live is something that Abby taught me many years ago when we first met, is use humor wherever you possibly can. Yes. And if you can make a stupid pun out of something stupid, and if somebody's doing something stupid, you can make somebody laugh their hearts out yes. of it. Right. Oh, Abby, I miss her too. Abby. No. <laughs> Abby had an appointment that today. I remember her telling me that last night. Yeah, time. I know. So, yeah, she, all right, she, ladies. So what I want you to do is go out and do something that we talked about today and then get back with me and let me know how it went and, and how you feel after you've done it. So I just yeah. did a screenshot. Will both of you please take a screenshot? I can't. Okay. I, can't. I don't know where it is. Okay. Tamara's going to do it, and then Tamara's going to send you the screenshot. How's that? Maybe. I don't know if I know how. <laughs> All right. I will send you girls a screenshot. How's that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Actually, if you, if you, instead of sharing it with us, just post it in the group and we'll post we it. We can there. share it from there. There we go. I'll we'll get Abby we'll get to share it for me. Yes. I will get that done. And um, um, I just want to thank you girls for being here. And I hope to see you tomorrow for the workspace. Bye. I'll be there. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.